Okay, today I'm doing this video because I got an email from another uh, YouTube member, uh, Third Eye Guy, who asked me some specific questions about the Roarball R9S and the Seacamp LWS380. Uh, he's looking for an ultimate pocket concealment pistol and he wanted me to do some side-by-side -side comparisons of these two. So I'm going to do a little side-by-side -side of these two, compare them to some other guns that everyone may be more familiar with the size of, and hopefully that way people will get a little bit better idea of the actual size of these two guns. As I said already today, we're comparing the Roarball R9S and the Seacamp LWS380. Uh, these are, in my opinion, the only two true pocket guns uh, on the market that I have found, other than like uh, kel things like that that I don't consider good enough quality for my own personal tastes. Uh, but to me, these are the only two that I find that are actually good, well-made pocket guns. I know a lot of people would consider like a Car PM40 a pocket gun, or maybe even a J-frame, a pocket gun. I don't. They're just too big for me, too heavy, too bulky. I just can't get away with it. Uh, these are the only two I've ever found that I actually can carry in my pocket. So we'll discuss their size, we'll compare them to some other guns, we'll compare them to each other for size, but we'll also discuss a couple other topics. So let's move on to those topics first. Let's just take a quick second here to discuss build quality. Uh, you're not going to be disappointed with either gun. I mean, just to put it bluntly, they're both exceptionally well-made guns. Uh, they blow away the rest of the competition pretty much in this category. The, uh, the way I would say it is the Roarball is like the epitome of CNC machinery. It is the epitome of modern machining, uh, conquering a small platform. The Seacamp is just a marvel of uh, craftsmanship. Larry C. Camp and Builds These has really, they have developed a beautiful pistol over there and they really know what they're doing. They devoted all their energy to this model of gun and it shows. So both of them are like tops in the field as far as their build quality goes. Like I said, marvel of CNC machinery, marvel of hand craftsmanship, both excellent, excellent weapons. So as far as build quality goes, either one of them, A plus, A plus. So you're not giving up anything on either one. Okay, real quick here before we do our size comparisons, let's talk about how each gun performs. Uh, both guns are very good performers. Let's talk about the Roarball first. Uh, because of their size, they're not the most comfortable guns in the world to shoot. Uh, the Roarball is by far the more comfortable of the two to shoot. Uh, it's a pretty accurate gun, you wouldn't suspect it. It doesn't exactly have much in the way of sights, but it is more of a pull and shoot gun. Very accurate at the range, uh, surprisingly accurate. Surprisingly easy to shoot. I would consider it uncomfortable, but not unmanageable. Uh, it, it doesn't really do you any damage when you shoot it, let's just say that. Uh, like I said, it's pretty accurate. It's been very reliable. I've never had any feeding problems with it. I've put quite a few rounds through this testing the springs. Uh, they do rec uh, suggest you, re you change the springs every few hundred rounds, but they're cheap. I just bought a bunch of them. And I actually did a test with the springs once where I shot several hundred rounds before the spring actually lost any, really noticeably lost any tension. So... Good gun at the range, uh, easy, not easy to shoot, but not bad to shoot, uh, which let's move on to the C camp here. A little bit different story in the shooting. Uh, it is a beast to shoot. It can tear your fingers up. Uh, if you're going to take it to the range and practice with it, I would wrap a Band-Aid around my finger just as a little protection, a little padding. I didn't do that the first time and I paid the price. Larry Seacamp actually suggests you do that, but this gun isn't meant for the range. This is meant to be a gun you can take anywhere any time and be completely concealed and it does that but like I say it is a little bit of a beast to fire at the range it does uh, shoot pretty accurately at close ranges I wouldn't use this gun for long distances but I've actually hit targets with it at quite a distance but you have to put a little effort into it this is more what I would consider a true belly gun point and shoot at close range which most self-defense shootings are going to be done at close range anyway so I'm not sure why people are worried about long distance shooting for self-defense but like I said a little bit of a beast to shoot at the range but uh, pretty good doggone accurate, pretty doggone accurate, uh, good looking little gun, just a good gun all around. Just like I said though, if you're going to take it to the range and shoot it as a range gun, put a band-aid on your finger. Okay, now let's discuss the actual carrying of these two guns. Uh, I have found that the Roarball works better for front pocket carry. I have a little front pocket holster here. If you just want to slip it in your front pocket, jeans pocket, uh, cargo pants pocket, works very well. Uh, the C-Camp I found works of course well for front pocket carry, but it works best for me in rear pocket carry. 
in a wallet holster. This part faces out, looks just like you're carrying a real wallet. When you reach in, your thumb just grabs the gun, pulls it right out of the back pocket. Very easy to carry, very easy to draw from that position. Much easier to draw from that, I think, even than a front pocket carry. Because you, you just got to get your thumb in the lip of your jeans, pull it out. This, you've actually got to get your hand in the pocket to pull it out. So I actually think this is the better method to carry. You can carry this in this kind of holster. They make the same holster for this gun. It is about a half inch bigger all the way around. Uh, and the only problem I've found with that is if it, it does not allow your pocket to close naturally. At least it doesn't allow mine to close naturally. So there is a little gap so that when you look, if you stood right behind me and looked down in my pocket, you would see that. You would see the top of the gun like that. Makes you a little more detectable. Uh, not enough that I think it's going to be a factor, but to me it is. So if you're wanting the most concealable one, it'll be this. If you want a little more power, it'd be the roar ball. If you want a little more concealable, like I said, it'd be the C camp. So it's kind of a trade-off here. Do you want the ultimate super small, or do you want the one with, that's almost as, not, no, it's not even almost as small, but it's the smallest 9mm you can get. Size-wise, as you'll see in the size comparisons, there's no comparison for them size-wise. But you do give up, this is 380, this is 9mm. So it's up to you whether you decide three, is 380 enough, is 9mm enough. Am I willing to shoot something that's as brutal as this, or do I want something a little easier to shoot like this? But uh, as far as carrying goes, they're both very manageable carry-wise. I also will carry the Roar Ball in an inside waistband holster. It disappears with cargo shorts and a t-shirt. just disappears. You'll never know it's there. I also have an outside waistband holster for it. But I've found that if I'm carrying it outside the waistband, if I've got enough concealment to do that, then I've got enough concealment to carry a bigger gun like my PM40 inside waistband. So I very, this holster never gets used. But that's how they really compare as far as carry goes. Easier to carry, smaller, looks like a true wallet. A little more difficult to carry, but larger caliber, a little more controllable shooting wise. So it's a you know trade off there, whichever one you decide is best for you. First, let's use a J frame. Everyone's familiar with a J frame, so let's compare them size wise to a J frame. First, the roar ball. If I just lay it over it here, you can see the J frame is actually much larger than the roar ball. If you hold them here side by side, you can see it's longer. If I pull them back butt to butt here, much longer. If you look at it this way, it's even, it's thicker of course, especially if you consider the cylinder, but even the grip is thicker. And height wise, if you put them bottom to bottom, the J frame is taller. So that gives you an idea of the gun compared to a J frame. Now let's do the C camp with the J frame. This is going to be an even more dramatic of a difference here. See so camp much, much thinner. Pull it back butt to butt here. Much, much shorter lengthwise. Much shorter heightwise. Just a tiny gun in comparison to the J Frey. I mean, it's not even. Not even close. The C camp is just minuscule in comparison. It makes the J frame look like a big gun. That's hard to do to make a J frame look big. But that is a comparison of the two with a J frame to kind of give you some size reference there between the two guns and a gun that everyone would be familiar with. Another little size comparison I'll give you here is something most people are familiar with a dollar bill. This is the C camp resting on a dollar bill. Very small gun. I think this really demonstrates how small this gun is. Now let's put the uh, roar ball in there. Still. Very small gun. Tiny, tiny guns. Both these guns are as small as you can actually go in their caliber uh, and still have a functional semi-automatic gun in my opinion. So both of these are tiny. I would have used a hundred dollar bill here if I was a gangster rapper, but those are in short supply around here. But that gives you an idea of the size compared to a dollar bill. Now let's do a comparison with another gun a lot of people are familiar with, a car PM series. This is the car PM40. It is slightly thicker than the PM9, but that'd be about the only real difference. And it's not even enough of a difference to really notice. So we'll just compare these two here. Uh, this is the roar ball compared to the car PM9. As you can see, it is still smaller. Compare them thickness wise here. Roar ball is smaller, definitely noticeably thinner. And it is also noticeably shorter, height wise. Not quite as tall, little difference there. Not as big a difference between these two height wise as uh, it is was with the J frame. But uh, that gives you an idea of the two of these guns side by side. 
Now let's do it with the secant. As you can see, the secant is much smaller once again. So here is the secant in comparison thickness and length, much, much smaller. Height wise, not even close. So just a much, much smaller gun. Uh, it is a smaller caliber, of course, too. We have to remember that. But uh, it is a tiny, tiny gun. I mean, this gun is go, it's a go-anywhere gun. One of the few true go-anywhere guns I've ever seen. 